Hello, um, editing Michelle here. I just wanted to say there is some swearing in this video. So if that is something that you don't want to listen to, um, I apologise. Um, the book is what the book where I swear is called The Day We Met by Roxy Cooper. Um, it's quite late on. I think it's like book number ten in this list or something. Um, they're in the bag, so I can't even tell you what it is. Um, but yeah, so if you come up with that book cover, um, just um, go just pause and go on the bottom and see which book comes next. Um, I think it's They Wish They Were Us. I think, don't quote me on that. Um, if it is, that one, I I think I say one swear word in that one. So again, if you want to skip that one, please do. Um, but I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Bye guys. Hey everyone, Michelle here and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to video number two of the in between Christmas and New Year week when New Year is tomorrow. Um, yeah, I do have another video come out tomorrow, so it's all good. I'm including that in this week. As you can see from the title below, today's video is all about the 12 books that really disappointed me this year. Now, I've already done my unhaul of books that I don't want from this year's books read. There's 19. So... I could have done 19 books in this video, but I thought just to go with my top 12 um, books from the other day, I'd do a top 12 disappointed. Yes, I am wearing the same top. No, it's not the same day the top's been washed. I was just lazy and grabbed the same one out of the wardrobe. So without further ado, let's get on to the 12 books that disappointed me this year. Now, obviously, the video I am doing today is a bit controversial at the moment online um, due to the hate that a booktuber called How to Train Your Gavin got on Twitter. I love Gavin. I will link his channel down below. I think he's hilarious. His disappointing books video, I didn't find controversial. I didn't find anything wrong with it. Majority of book Twitter, booktube, bookstagram didn't. But for some reason, some authors who weren't even mentioned in the video decided to have a go at Gavin on Twitter. I'm sorry, he's allowed his own opinions. I, it, it really annoyed me, I'll be honest, because it was kind of like, he never said in that video that his opinions were the only one that mattered. He didn't even mention your books in the video. And I'm sorry, he's a reviewer, like a lot of us are on BookTube. He's allowed his own opinions rant over so the first book i picked up that was disappointing to me this year was a wicked magic by sasha lawrence now i give this book three and a half stars now you're probably thinking michelle that's quite a good rating why is it disappointing where was the magic so it was a good story of lost friends coming back of people finding each other dealing with mental health which i thought was really good there just wasn't a lot of magic. It was just kind of a bit of a, here's a spring clean, we found a book. We're gonna forget about the magic now, kind of. Oh, we need a plot point. Here's a magic person. Forget about the magic. Oh, at the end of the book, now here's a bit more magic. That was it. It wasn't that they didn't use, the characters didn't use magic everyday lives. There was nothing about them trying to find out more about magic, to find out where this book came from, to learn more, to develop their skills. It was a big disappointment because I guess I wanted to love this book. I really did. Disappointing to me, I'll be honest, I didn't really read a lot of magic books like I wanted to this year. And to think, I almost kind of feel like I wasted my time a little bit. But I'm going to sound really, <laughs> I'm going to sound like I'm flip-flopping, but I'm really not. It is a good book, like I said, if it was about mental health and about how teenagers deal with mental health. All over it. I would be all over it. This would be a four and a half star book. The magic just didn't seem to fit with the storyline. The next book on my list is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I think I, I, think I gave this book one star or two stars. 
by gosh, what a book about nothing. Oh, what a book about nothing. So basically you are following a recently widowed woman who, to get away from London, decides to go to the countryside of Essex to look for the Essex Serpent. To look for the Essex Serpent, a mythical creature. She becomes friends with a vicar. And it's a, it's a story of, I mean, this novel is most of all a celebration of love and the many different guises it can take. Baloney, this is a story about a widowed woman and a vicar who have an emotional affair on his wife who is severely unwell and then have a physical affair on his wife. It gets to the point, there is a chapter in this book where the vicar cheats on his wife thinking she's going to be dead soon, it doesn't matter. The Essex Serpent doesn't exist. It's a story about nothing. I'm sorry, I hate... I'm gonna... Is this gonna be another issue that I have with another book on this list? I hate cheaters and writers trying to justify cheating like, oh, well, his partner's dying. So what? Emotional cheating in my eyes is as bad as physical cheating and I'm sorry, I do not want to read about it. If I did know this was in this book, I would not have read it, being honest. The next book on my list is The Less Dead by Denise Mina. In this book, you follow a character whose name leaves my head now, who is adopted and wants to start looking for her real birth parents. Instead of meeting her parents, she meets her maternal aunt who tells her that her mother was murdered a few months after her birth and that the killer is sending her letters even now. I think it's like 20 something years later. I give this book three and a half stars. I enjoyed 60% of it. There's nothing wrong with Denise's writing. Her world building is kind of great. I just guessed every single twist in this book. And the red herrings were so obviously red herrings that straight away, as soon as I read them, I dismissed them. It's not put me off Denise's work. I just was disappointed that I guessed all the big twists. If there's just one twist that I didn't see coming, I'd have been so much happier. It's just the fact that I guessed every single one of them puts me off. And that's what disappointed me about this book. The next book on this list is All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. This book, you follow six characters who don't really have anything to do with each other. All of them are given scholarships to their chosen universities or colleges as it's set in America but when they get there they are locked in and there is a note saying that they have 60 minutes to try and get out of the room or they have to poison someone and you are going back to the past to find out how all these characters interacted, why some relationships are strained and then you get the ending. I give this book three stars. Half of it was good. Half of it was good. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I liked the past bits. The bit set in the past I enjoyed. But the parts of the present. It was kind of like pointless almost and it was very, I know I'm not the target audience, I'm not a teenager, I'm not. But it was just kind of like, really, isn't this even a little bit far-fetched? And then the ending when you find out who set all this up, and you're just like, really? And then after you found out that it was this person, that thing happens and you're like, little bit too far-fetched for me but yeah 
three stars disappointed this book came to my attention because of karen mcmanus she retweeted it she enjoyed it and i thought well i enjoy her work i'll probably enjoy this again three stars is not a bad rating i just didn't like 50 percent of it the next couple of books are going to be really really short because i just didn't like them first up we have to tell you the truth by Jilly mcmillan i hate every single character I mean that every single character the plot points were just ridiculous and then that ending was just like didn't care I think this is the thing I didn't care about the characters so I didn't care about what happened to them and I didn't care about this silly little plot about a woman who was convinced she was isn't it that she's convinced her husband yeah her husband keeps secrets when she was younger her little sibling went missing and it's her fault and she thinks it's happening again and this is what I mean that should intrigue me a woman who's like thinking that what happened when she was young is happening again and her husband's keeping secrets and she's a writer just 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 I wanted to love this book I hated the main character I disliked every other character apart from one yeah there was just one that I liked I think give it two stars in the end Glad I'm on holiday. The next book is The Majesties by Tiffany Zhao. In this book, you are following um, Gwendolyn, who is lying in a coma, the sole survivor of her sister Estella, try, well, has co managing to kill her entire family apart from Gwendolyn. And you are following Gwendolyn as she's kind of remembering her family's history, her past, certain things that happened. To try and figure out if she can see when Estella changed to wanting to kill her family. Spoiler alert, Estella didn't exist. So you're reading all this thing about how um, with Estella's first husband, he disappointed her and he had a mistress and lost money from her correctly. So her family decided to kill him because that's what apparently happens in the... Um, Chinese Indonesian ultra elite and then they, there's another story of her of Gwendolyn and Estella trying to find an aunt who has been long who has left the family has no contact what if there had been clues that Estella was a figment of Gwendolyn's imagination I'd have enjoyed this book so much more it literally is just that you get to the end in art and by the way, she doesn't exist. Where in these pages are the hints? You can't just drop a big bombshell like that and have nothing leading up to it. You can't, I'm sorry. And that's the reason I give it two stars. I kind of wish I had DNF this book even if it was like 90% of the way through when we find out about this bombshell. But I kept reading. I kept reading. The next book on my list is Star Daughter by Shveta Thakra. In this book, you are following Sheetal, who is half star, half human. Her mother is a star, her father is human. When Sheetal was younger, her mother went back up to the heavens to be a star. Um, when Sheetal accidentally injures her father, she um, realises that the only way to heal him is to get the blood of a full star. So along with her human best friend, she goes up to the heavens to be her family's representative in a competition to see which family is going to control the stars. And then there's another storyline of where Sheetal's boyfriend is part of a family of witch hunters whose ancestor once had Sheetal's ancestor locked in a cage and there's all sorts. I give this book three stars from what I can remember of it and that's not I'm not saying that it was I read it so long ago that I can't remember I think I read it in August it's just for some reason whenever I put this book down and I go do something else I wouldn't be able to remember what happened at all it's really bad it's something i said in one of the book groups on i am i mean on facebook and a lot of people were saying the same thing 
they'd put the book down to go do something else like to go eat dinner to go to work they'd come back to it and i'd ha me well myself along with all these other people would have to go and read the last two chapters to try and jog oh yeah that happened it's really bad because like i said from what i can remember i enjoyed it um Sveta's writing is good and her world building is good and I did enjoy this star world. I just wish I could remember more of the story. On to another book which I absolutely detested. The Day We Met by Roxy Cooper. Two stars. A story about two people who over 10 years emotionally and physically cheat on their partners and you're being fed that this is a great love story and that the ending when she gets cancer and she dies and it's so sad because they only had so little time together as a proper couple it's gonna sound this is gonna sound harsh especially as someone who has had the darkness that is cancer on the family and losing someone from cancer i couldn't give two f's that she had cancer and they only had 18 months together as a real couple. They both fucking emotionally cheated on their partners. They physically cheated on their partners. They made plans every year for the same weekend to go out and fucking physically cheat on their partners. So why the hell should I feel sad that they only had 18 months together? I'm sorry, no, if you're not happy in your relationship, leave. If you're not being... I know some people can't like if you're being abused or your self confidence is that bad and you're being manipulated, you can't. That didn't happen with any of these couples. They were both literally just like, well, I'm not happy with that relationship, but I'll have that weekend away with this person to get my bit of fun on. Don't give two fucks. There was no reason these, these two people could not leave their partners for each other until they got pregnant. Then it was, oh, we can't be with them now, they're pregnant. Oh, now his partner's pregnant and I'm pregnant. And it was you you was it was like you were meant to feel sad. I did not feel sad for them. I felt sad for their partners who got fucking cheated on for ten years. Who for children whose parents weren't always there mentally because they were thinking about the other fucking person. The characters I did like, her sister and her partner. Loved them. They were fucking it, weren't in it though, I'm sorry. If you don't like swearing, I'm really sorry. I'll put it in this video that this is a sweary rant. But Jesus fucking Christ. Why the fuck should I care about them only having 18 months together when for the majority of the book they were emotionally and physically cheating on their fucking partners or husbands or wives? Why? I don't know why I give it two stars. One star then. The next book on my list is They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. I enjoyed... 80% of this book. There were 20% of it I didn't like. I gave it three stars. The big thing was these people who were bullying younger people got happy friggin' endings. I don't even want to tell you about what this book's about, but there we go. Um, you are following a senior who, when she first started high school, her best friend was killed by her boyfriend. And they were all part of this super secretive club that everyone knew about. And when you get to a, when you get to be a senior, you have to for people come into this group, they have to do certain activities. So stuff like um, run strip tease, do a strip tease on the beach, run down the town naked, steal booze, um, kiss a person you don't who you don't want to be kissed, and stuff like that. Really fucking hard things that are bullying. Um, and she basically gets a note, say, well, a text saying that, oh, the boyfriend was innocent and it's about meant to be about her finding out who the real killer is. I knew straight away who the real killer was. I knew straight away who her friend was having an affair with. And I thought when it all came out, here we go. These group of friends who aren't very nice people are going to get their comeuppance. No, we're going to invite everyone in the school to these parties that we used to have and we're not going to be an exclusive club anymore and happy ever after. Fuck off. I'm sorry, but just, no, fuck Next off. book on the list is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. You follow Oliver, who 
is coming who no sorry Oliver has just finished his 10 year sentence for a murder of a classmate when he was in college um the detective at the time has retired and now comes to Oliver and saying listen I know you weren't all telling the truth back then I'm retired I can't get you rearrested tell me the truth so you go back in time and you are with Oliver and his friends and you are seeing what happened to lead to this person dying and to how Oliver was guilty, well, was sentenced as guilty for the murder. It's a school, it's a college all about Shakespeare. And they talk in Shakespeare the entire way through this book. The entire way through this book. And I mean they quote Shakespeare, they talk like Shakespeare's characters were. You can't go three frigging pages without Shakespeare. I enjoy Shakespeare, I do. Don't ask me how because in high school I hated it. I enjoy Shakespeare's work. If I wanted to read every single play of Shakespeare's, I would read them in their entirety instead of random flipping quotes here, there and every frigging where. And especially when I don't know every single Shakespeare play, so they'll say something and I'm like, where's that frigging from? I'm spending half my time researching what Shakespeare play they're quoting. Was not what I thought it would be and that really, really, really disappointed me. The second to last book on my list is He Started It by Samantha Downing. You follow three siblings who, after their grandfather's passing, find out that for them to inherit they have to go back and redo the trip they went on when they were younger with their grandfather oh boy i hate this book um so basically there are twists that don't need to be in here well sorry the first big twist no point there was no point for this friggin twist the ending I hated. You're meant to feel you're meant to hate a certain character in here. She was the only character I liked. If you've read this book, it's the new wife. Yeah. I I don't understand the rare reviews for this book. I really don't. This is one of the books where the hype I I I can't see the hype. I can't see where this hype's coming from. So yeah, two stars. Um, I did want to read Samantha's other work, My Lovely Wife, but this has put me right off her work. And I know she's got another book coming out next year. I ain't picking it up unless someone, basically unless someone spoils it for me. And I think, yes, yeah, actually a pretty good story. I ain't picking it up. And the last book on my list, I unfortunately am not able to say too much because it's part of a series, but that is... Alpha Night by Nalini Singh. This is book 18, 19, I want to say, in the Psy Changeling series. Yeah. So that whole list is at the bottom of that list. Um, in this, you are following a female alpha of a um, wolf changeling pack, if I remember correctly, Selena who after an attack in her city when she arrives meets the eyes of an arrow psy called ethan and there is insta love it did not i love N nalina's work i do me and my sisters we did read her angel series but we all stopped after a certain point because it felt a bit even though it is fancy it felt a bit like really um but this was one series that we loved. Now every year there is another book, or every two years there's another book of this series released on or around my one of my sister's birthdays. And this is my guaranteed present to her every year. So basically she reads it, I get it after, the my eldest sister gets it. She texted me about this book and was like, I don't want to read this series anymore. And after reading this, it put me right off the series. I love this series, like we all do. Um, it's very telling that the eldest sister hasn't asked for this to read. Um, 
this just felt too quick, too fast with not enough information, which was a shame. Um, I am going to pick up the next book in this series, but if that doesn't, if that one is as, if I feel for that one as much as I feel for this one, I might unfortunately have to stop reading this series too. There are all, oh, spoilers, there are all 12 books that disappointed me this year. As I said at the beginning of this video, I could have made it 19, um, but I didn't. Like I said, I just thought I'd go along with the same number as I did with the books that I really, really liked. Um, yeah. Um, so that's it for today's video. So there will be another video up tomorrow. Tomorrow's video will be my um, end of 2020 wrap up for reading and then my 2021 reading goals and you will find out how my upload is going to change a little my uploading schedule is going to change a little bit the types of videos i'm doing next year um i've already mentioned a couple that i'm going to do a couple of videos ago so you'll probably know what's coming tomorrow um i'm also starting a reading journal like you see from everyone else and um, basically i know Brittany from um b at the brit the bibliophile brit the bibliophile on youtube shows really lovely artistic ones i will link her videos down below because they're beautiful but maddie at the book browsing blog i will link her video down below she did one and it was very minimalistic but still beautiful and i actually commented on that thinking you know what you have inspired me to do one because i'm not artistic you'll see that in the video i'll show you what i actually do it's not going to be great um but seeing her just doing it so simple I was like, you know what, I want to do it. Um, so I will show you that. I'm not going to do what everyone else does and go and here's every single bit of equipment I did and here's me actually doing it. I'm just going to show you how I'm setting it up because um, I'm in the middle of planning that so I need to complete it. Um, then over the weekend I will do my December wrap up and my January TBR will be out next week. But I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you when that's going to be up in tomorrow's 2021 reading goals video thing. Um, so yeah, that was my video. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. The button's just there. Um, I do apologise for the swearing. Um, yeah. Um, but until tomorrow. Um, oh, I'm filming this on New Year's Eve. So... I want to wish everyone a happy new year's eve and fingers crossed touch wood that 2021 is a bit better than 2020 it should be but happy new year's everyone i hope you're all happy healthy and safe and i will see you all in 2021 bye guys